We learned a lot about models up to this point. We also learned how we can output them in templates. There are two main things left which I want to dive in. For one, I want to override the save method and show you why this might sometimes be useful. And I want to do that to give us nicer URLs here. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. And the other thing is, I want to introduce you to some aggregation methods. So getting counts and averages and so on. But let's start with that overriding part and the nicer URLs. Wouldn't it be nicer, also from a search engine perspective, if we had something like Harry-Potter-1? That's this slug concept which I introduced when we started working on the blog application. And I'd like to have it here as well. So I think that would be nice to have, but how can we achieve this? How can we kind of convert our ID to this slug type? Well, we don't necessarily need to replace our ID. Having that separate unique identifier might not be too bad. But I want to add a new slug field, a new slug attribute to my book model. And that should be of type models slug field. There is a specific field for this slug value type built into Django. And that field will ensure that whatever gets stored in this slug attribute has this slug format so that it does look like Harry-Potter-1. There is some automatic validation for this kind of string built into the slug field. But how do we now best use that? I think it would be best if we actually would set this slug field to a certain value whenever we save a new book so that it's auto-populated, that we don't need to manually enter a slug here, but that it's automatically populated based on the title. Because the slug should always be the title just transformed to this slug version. So if the title is Harry Potter 1, it would be great if the slug field is automatically populated with Harry-Potter-1 like this. And to achieve this, I will now set the default value here to an empty string, actually. I will set null to false, which just means it must not be null. And I now want to make sure that a value other than the default value is set whenever we call save. And to achieve this, there's one simple thing we can do. We can override the built-in save method. That is something we can do. We can override this. If we override it, though, we have to make sure that we also call the super save method. So here, after we're done with our custom steps, we should call super.save to make sure that Django's built-in save method is still getting called. And we also should make sure that any extra arguments to save, which might be passed to the save method, are forwarded. We're not working with such extra arguments here, but it would be nice to have that in general. So on the save method here, we should accept the args and keyword arguments. And that's some standard Python syntax, which basically says group all positional and all keyword arguments into a summary parameter named args and a summary parameter named quarks. And then let's forward them by splitting them back up into lists of arguments to the built-in save method. And that's something we have to do to make sure that the built-in save method definitely gets called. But now, besides that, we can do whatever we want. And what I do want to do here, before the built-in save method gets called, so before the data is stored to the database, I want to update the slug field. I want to set the slug field to a new value with self slug. And I want to set it to a value which is based on the title, which definitely has been set when save is called. If not, saving would fail anyways. So now we just need to transform title to a slug. And thankfully, Django has a built-in method for that, a built-in function. From Django utils dot text, we can import Slugify. That's another import we can add to import the built-in Slugify helper function. 
And the Slugify helper function does what the name kind of implies. It transforms a string to a slug. So it transforms some text which might look like this to text which looks like this and fulfills this slug formatting criteria. So therefore here in the save method which we're overriding, we can set the slug field to slugify self.title, taking the title which was set and transforming it to a slug. And then we call super save to save that data to the database. And by doing that, we ensure that such a slug is added for all our models, for all the data entries we have in the database in the end. Now, of course, for the existing data which we have in the database, that will not happen. There, we need to update it manually. But typically, of course, you would define your overall model before you start saving data. Here, it's just different because I'm walking through that step by step. Therefore, here we'll have to update the existing data manually, but newly entered data will have its slug automatically set. Hence, here we can save this and now quit the development server. And now with the dev server stopped, I want to run my migrations. I want to create the migrations and run them. Because we changed the model, we added a new field and therefore we need to make new migrations and run them. Otherwise, our model is not in sync with the database and that's not a good thing. Hence, here we can run Python 3 manage py make migrations and then run Python 3 manage py migrate and thereafter we can dive back into the shell with manage py shell and in there now import from book outlet.models the book model to now get access to the different models and update their slug field and once the book is imported all we need to do in the end is reach out to a specific entry like Harry Potter, so where the title is like this, and call save on that entry thereafter. And if I do that, the slug should be set because when we call save, we call our updated overwritten save method, and there we do set the slug before we actually call save and hit the database. So just saving the already existing data again should do the trick. Now let's see whether that works. And therefore, let's again get book objects, get title Harry Potter 1 and access the slug there. And it is Harry Potter 1. So that worked. Hence now to update the other entries as well, we just need to repeat what we just did and get access to Lord of the Rings and call save there to update this. And now... Here, if I access the slug, that should also be set. Looking good. And then do the same also for my story and also for some random book. And now all those slugs should have been generated as well. And we could also add a brand new book now. And for that, the slug should also be set when we then call save. But I'll not do that here. Instead, now I want to make sure that we use that slug for constructing that URL. And definitely try this on your own first, so that that slug is part of the actual URL which is being used. We're going to do it together in the next lecture.